Okay, so this is a uh, follow-up video to the uh, video I made on the Crazy Bee F4 3.0 board. This is the new one that I uh, reviewed a couple weeks ago, and this is the one also, that's also in the Larva X. This is actually pulled from a Larva X. And there are some questions about how to add a external receiver to the ones that have a built-in receiver. And uh, apparently you can do this on boards going back a few generations, but I'm just going to cover the newest board here. There, If you look at the diagrams for the older boards, the same principles will apply to that. So you can uh, just take what I say here and use it for those other boards. But as you can see here, this one has a built-in SBA receiver. And for whatever reason, these uh, new ones, uh, the, uh, the version 3, seems to have even worse reception than uh, the previous generation. So I wanted to add an external receiver to this one. And this is uh, this is a new receiver from Newbie Drone that just came out. It's called the BC V2. It does uh, FreeSky and Futaba protocol. I'll have a separate video on that. I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Now, I did put up a diagram on the wiring uh, of the board here, but I guess uh, people <laughs> couldn't follow along. So I just I was going to uh, actually show you an installed receiver here, and then I'll, I'll explain the differences between this one here, which is actually in the uninverted mode versus the inverted receivers like the XM Plus. Um, I think that was the most confusion and also for those of you guys that want to use Crossfire or something like say with free something with um, like a RXSR with free sky telemetry I'll, I'll try and explain that as well. So first off let me just show you how I wired up this receiver here. This is an SBUS receiver and uh, it has the the signal that's coming out of here is uninverted so uh, a lot of people have issues with hooking up the receivers and then it turns out that the receiver has an inverted signal and the board can't handle an inverted signal or they have the problem that's the opposite. So this is an uninverted signal that's coming out of this particular receiver and so I am wiring it up to this pad right here. Let's see the camera will focus. It's right there. And this is RX2. The one that's next to it doesn't have any solder on it, that, that uh, copper pad there, that's a blank, that's RX1. Now, the reason I'm using RX2 or UR2 for this receiver is because Smart Audio is on UR1, and this is TX1 right here, this little green wire here that goes to the Diamond VTX, this is Smart Audio. And so you can have Smart Audio and your receiver on the same UR, so that's why it's on U. You are two and not you are one. Also, uh, for these situations where you have an uninverted receiver, uh, you're going to want to use this pad here. It's uninverted, so it'll work for uninverted S bus. It'll work for I bus, Spectrum, and also Crossfire. So if you want to wire up a Crossfire receiver, you're also going to use RX2 here as well. Oh, and by the way, the power I'm getting here is just over here. Um, I have ground on the same pad as ground, basically this really large blob of solder right there. It's sharing that, that's not too bad. Now, I didn't want to, you know, you have to get 5 volts from over here, that's going to the VTX, but that looks like it's going to be pretty tight and uh, have that one little pad for both two wires. So I, I wired my 5 volts here to the buzzer positive, this is also 5 volts, and that'll work just fine. This is the, the, the pad next to it is the buzzer negative. So if you want to get 5 volts, get it from here and then you just uh, solder your ground wire here like that and that'll, that'll be totally fine. So this will work for any of your receivers for power. Ground here, 5 volts here, and that'll power Spectrum, iBus, whatever. The only problem is if you have a 3.3 volt receiver, I, let me see, I don't know if I remember if there's a 3.3 volt pad in here or not. Yeah, just looked at the documentation. I don't see a 3.3 volt pattern here. So if you have one of those Spectrum satellite receivers, I'm not exactly sure what you what to do about that one. I if you really, really, really want uh, that information, let me know, and I'll try and dig it up. Um, yeah, just leave me some comments below. But I don't see that in the documentation. Anyway, uh, back to what I was talking before. If you if you want to uh, wire a crosswire, you're going to wire it up here for five volts here. Your um, that you're going to use RX2 here, and then TX2 is going to be this pad right there, and then that's the that's how you're going to wire up Crossfire, and then of course your normal Crossfire setup, of course. 
Now, if you're in the situation here, we have the Larva X and you want to use an inverted S-Bus receiver like the XM Plus receiver, you're not going to be able to use this pad here because that's uninverted. You have to use this pad over here, right there. This is like, so there's like, this is one, two, three, and so there's four pads. There's one, two, three, four. It's pad number three. That is inverted um, S-Bus right there. But that is on UART 1. So if you want to use an uh, XM Plus receiver with Smart Audio, you have to move Smart Audio from UART 1 to UART 2. So this green wire here, you have to move over to TX2 over here, and then wire up your signal for your FreeSky XM Plus receiver to this pad over here, which is inverted RX1 on UART 1, and then you get power and ground over here, same as before. So. Um, yeah, I tried to explain that to a few people, but I guess they were too confused, so I decided to make another video about that. Because the inversion versus uninverted is very confusing for a lot of people, so hopefully this has helped you guys out. Um, also, uh, you do have to turn off the uh, internal SPI receiver. It's if you're using the ones with the internal SPI receiver, you have to you know, obviously change it to... Um, uh, serial based receiver and S bus and when you do that it'll actually turn off the um, internal uh, SPI receiver and you should probably desolder the antenna here and I just want to get rid of it so I'm just going to use some cutters and cut it off mm, you should probably desolder it but I'm just gonna cut it off yeah don't need it and that will get rid of that I won't be in the way and then I can go ahead and use this new receiver. Hopefully this has a better range. We'll see. I'll have a separate video on this one if you're interested in the B-Siever V2 uh, from Newbie Drone. That'll be in a separate video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thumbs up if you liked it. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.